I'm the chief author of single payer health care. Why? That's the vision part. You need the courage, you need the vision. Every candidate talks about universal health care. In Washington, universal health care. I've never heard a Democrat say there for, hey, we want 93% health care. Nobody says it. They say we want universal health care. But their proposals get us maybe to 92, 93, that's where we are in Minnesota, 93%. Even with the robust public option in the proposal in Washington, it would cover 94% with insurance. And as many of you know, people with insurance don't always have the health care they need. They have insurance, but it doesn't cover dental care. It doesn't cover prescription drugs. It doesn't cover some. Or it's got $10,000 deductible. It doesn't cover them. I believe when you talk about universal health care, maybe you ought to mean it. I'm running for governor because I think we can do a much better job than we've been doing. I describe what we've been doing as when we're Democrats making progress, we're tinkering with things. We work and we increase the minimum wage by 50 cents an hour and we wait three, four, five years to inflation robs of a dollar in value. Then we try and raise another 30 cents. So we keep winning these little battles and we're losing the war. Working people are not making it. I know working people who spend evenings in church basements and homeless shelters because they can't afford housing. Why am I the candidate to bring you there? I think it takes three things. One, courage. It means standing up for what you believe. Not always popular things. Ten years ago there was a tax cut frenzy in the state. School districts were laying off teachers. They had all of the problems we have now with homelessness and with housing and health care. Roads and bridges weren't in great shape. Taxpayers League got a new governor named Jesse Ventura saying he was going to cut taxes. And that was really, really, really popular. How do I know that? Well, they passed the biggest tax cut in state history, income tax cuts. People at the top end got most of the money. And they passed it. It wasn't a close call, actually. It was 64 to 1 in the state senate. The following year, they cut taxes again. It was 65 to 1 in the state senate. I was the only no vote, and despite coming from a Republican leading district, I thought I had to say no because I thought it was wrong. I'm the chief author of single payer health care. Why? That's the vision part. You need the courage, you need the vision. So I had the vision and to put together a health plan, I had the courage to stand up for my convictions. I'm running for governor because I think I got the integrity to push to make that the law. I'm the one candidate who doesn't take any PAC or lobbyist money. I think special interest money is corrupting our process. It's not corrupt donors. It's not corrupt recipients. It's a corrupt process. If you look at, you know, Ziggy Wilf, owner of the Vikings, he gave 20,000 bucks four years ago to the Republican Party. He gave 20,000 bucks to the DFL Party, too. I don't know if he could figure out what party he was. He gave 10,000 to the DFL caucuses at the legislature. He actually gave 12,000 to Republican caucuses. He gave 5,000 to Tim Pawlenty. 5,000 to Mike Hatch. Well, he was trying to get something. He couldn't decide who he was for. No, he was trying to buy access to people and buy goodwill. And it's legal here. As a matter of fact, we reward him. He's a big donor. If you can raise a lot of money from people like that, you're a successful politician. But if suggest that before the Vikings game last week, suggest that he decided he was going to do the same kind of thing that he did to the public officials with the officials in the New Orleans game. And just decide, you know, those officials, they work hard, they get a lot of grief from people, you know, nobody likes them. And what if he decided, you know, they got kids to send off to college and he was going to give them $500 gifts before the game. Contributions. I don't think the league would say, well, why don't we watch and see if those officials throw the game to the Vikings? I think they'd be saying, you can't do that. It's against the rules. You're out of the league if you're going to do that. I think it's important to do I don't take PAC money or lobbyist money because you can't speak truth to power when you're taking the big money from power. You know, if you take mental health and chemical dependency, treat people for it, you're not going to end the problems. There's still going to be chemically dependent people. There's still going to be mentally ill people. But right now, we don't even try to treat it. So where do we put people with mental illness or chemical dependency problems or both? We put them in prison because they do bad things. 
we got to recognize that those are health issues that need healing, not crime issues that need punishment. And we can do that. And if we do this, I picture 10 years from now, instead of saying, well, we had a drop in the crime rate in Minneapolis the last couple of years. Ooh, this year it started off the year with a bad start. What if we talked in terms of a decade from now, we tried to cut the crime rate in half and meant it? Oh, is that utopia? I'm not saying we're going to end crime. We're never going to end chemical dependency. We're never going to end problems. But at least we try and we can build a better future. And we learned as a society three years ago what happens when we don't take care of our physical infrastructure. Bridges collapse. Our human infrastructure is even more important. And I think Paul Wellstone's message, we all do better when we all do better, is something we've got to learn from. I think we're wasting human resources by taking a big chunk of our population, locking them up at thousands of bucks a year. And um, a number of years ago, I remember watching the expenditures. California used to spend about 10 times as much on higher education as they did on their prison system. About 10 years ago, the two lines crossed. They were spending more on prison than on higher education. And there is a connection between the two, and it keeps getting worse, and it's cheaper to send somebody Jesse Jackson used to say, cheaper send somebody to Penn State than the state pen. Poverty Commission, one more thing, then I'll take another question. Co-chaired the Poverty Commission. It's the name the legislative, the Minnesota Legislative Commission on Ending Poverty in Minnesota by 2020. So many of the proposals, oh, you know, we could do a little of this and a little of this and a little of this, and things would be better then. And I had to remind the commission at one point that the name of the commission told us our mission. I said, I didn't want to chair a commission on the Legislative Commission on making poverty a little less miserable for some of the people in it by 2020. And they wouldn't want to serve on that either. It sounds wimpy. Who wants to be on that? Like, why does, if Democrats don't want to support universal health care, why don't they say, hey, I'm in favor of insuring 94% of the public? I mean, that would be honest. People are sick of dishonesty in politics. They're not trying to be dishonest, but it is. We ought to be angry about this and change it. And I'm fighting because I think we can. I think it's worth it. And I know I've won some races. My first race was a big upset. I've run lots of races I've won. And I lost a big one. I know that. And I've got to live with that. But I, I don't think that means we shouldn't ever try again. Paul Wellstone lost the same guy I lost to. He lost big to him 10 years earlier. And he won because we gave him a second chance. If, if the president had started out arguing for health care for everyone. He might not win right now, but if he didn't win, he'd have a chance to tell people, elect members of Congress who will support me on this. If he said to them, you know, it's us against the insurance companies, whose side are you on? Send me members who are going to vote for health care instead of health insurance. I don't know if he'd pass the first year, but he'd sure be back this November. He'd pick up seats instead of losing them. I think he's going to lose them the way he's going. Civil rights movement in the 60s, Whites are never going to give rights to African Americans. Well, some people say that's wrong and we can't, Martin Luther King, why we can't wait? He talked about all the people who sympathize and, oh, we agree with you, but, but don't rush things. Well, I think it's time to say we can do these. If they could do them, we can do them. If you want, if you want single payer health care, vote for somebody who has the courage of their convictions on it. I think I got now eight or nine of my opponents are supporting the same thing.